complete surgical excision remains the primary treatment of choice for well defined clinically benign orbital tumors orbitotomy provides access to surgical spaces in the orbit each orbitotomy technique is designed to provide the best surgical exposure to the lesion of interest while causing least damage to the orbital structures with a goal to achieve optimal functional and cosmetic outcome surgical approach to the orbit can be anterior lateral medial transfrontal transnasal or through a paranasal sinus the choice of approach depends on the anatomical location of the lesion the size and extent of the lesion its relationship to the vital structures in the orbit clinically suspected pathology and the goal of the surgery the choice of the surgical approach depends on whether one is performing an incisional biopsy excisional biopsy debulking or decompression for example for biopsy of a suspected lacrimal gland carcinoma the approach for an anterior orbitotomy would be transeptal orbital tumors that lie anterior to the equator of the globe can be approached by an anterior orbitotomy incisions for anterior orbitotomy can be subra eyelid crease eyelid split subciliary lower eyelid medial superior medial or transconjunctival lateral orbitotomy and its numerous modifications have been used since its first description by cronlein for larger and intraconal lesions in the superior or lateral orbit and for deeper orbital lesions that require wide access to the deep orbital contents and optic nerve a lateral orbitotomy is preferred Medial intra and extra coronal lesions are best approached by a transcarinchular incision or medial transcutaneous approach. Inferior transconjunctival orbitotomy is a versatile technique that provides a scarless, minimally invasive and safe approach to extra and intra coronal orbital tumors. A lower eyelid for initial conjunctival incision when combined with the lateral canthotomy and inferior cantholysis provides a panoramic exposure of the inferior and lateral orbit hence it may be used for intra and extra coronal lesions of the inferior orbit intra and extra coronal lesion of the lateral orbit this video incorporates an orbitotomy surgery by the inferior fornicial conjunctival approach for an intraconal cavernous hemangioma in the left orbit in a 39 year old patient the surgery is usually performed under general anesthesia a 10 mm lateral canthotomy is marked along the relaxed tension lines and canthotomy is performed using a radio frequency device inferior cantholysis is performed to provide improved exposure of the orbit an inferior fornicial conjunctival incision is made immediately below the inferior border of the tarsus beginning just lateral to the punctum and extending to the lateral canthus to meet the existing lateral canthotomy incision Hemostasis is achieved using bipolar cautery when required. A plane of dissection is created anterior to the orbital septum after incising the orbicularis. Dissection is continued in the suborbicularis plane while recessing the septum to approach the inferior orbital margin. The inferior orbital margin is exposed to its entirety. Periosteal incision is made with a monopolar electrode immediately below the inferior orbital rim. Relaxing incisions are given at either end perpendicular to the horizontal incision. Periosteum is separated from the bone and subperiosteal orbital space is approached.
the dissection is limited so as to not damage the infraorbital nerve as it begins its intraosseous course and the contents of the inferior orbital fissure. Four zero silk tractional sutures are passed to retract the periosteum. Pupil is assessed at regular intervals throughout the surgery to ensure no undue pressure is exerted on the optic nerve. After adequate separation, an incision is made in the periosteum causing fat prolapse. The fat is then gently separated to locate the intraconal tumor, in our case a cavernous hemangioma. Blunt dissectors are used to gently separate the tumor by manually. The tumor itself is not held with forceps. Tissue is only separated free from the tumor and generally not cut. Once about 70-80% to 80 of the tumor is dissected free, a 3 mm cryoprobe was applied to provide anterior posterior traction. Tissue adherent to the tumor is gently separated under direct visualization. As the tumor is delivered, an attempt is made to identify any vascular pedicle and if visualized, it is cauterized. Once the tumor is delivered, hemostasis is achieved by pressure and limited cautery. Conjunctiva is closed with interrupted sutures with 6-0 vicryl without suturing the periosteum. Lateral canthotomy is repaired with 6-0 vicryl suture. In general, the transconjunctival approach to the orbit has been underutilized because of concern regarding inadequate exposure and of post-operative complications such as lower eyelid shortening and ectropion. However, with current imaging modalities allowing proper case selection, this approach offers several advantages compared to conventional methods. Lower eyelid complications can be avoided by limiting dissection to the suborbicularis plane at the time of exposure and careful repositioning and suturing of the tissues at the time of closure. Our patient did well postoperatively with excellent cosmesis and no complications. She was ready to go back to her job in a week.